Today we're going to be building a little image upload application using Filestack's File Uploader and File Upload API. I'm going to talk about some of my favorite features, including some of the transformations Filestack can apply, as well as how it can do adaptive delivery, delivering the correct image based on things like the width of the viewport. Let's take a look at the example application. I'm going to be building a little photo album application. You can see I've got some pictures of my cats here. I'd like to support a couple of different features, including the ability to upload multiple images and the ability to edit images on the fly. In order to make sure the correct image is delivered, we're going to be using one more of Filestack's libraries, the Filestack Adaptive Image Library. This is going to leverage the HTML picture element to ensure the correct image is loaded based on things like the format and the width of the viewport. Let's go ahead, take a look at the system design to see how we're going to implement this, and then we'll start building out our application. Before we start building our application, we're going to talk a little bit about system design. Firestack provide an SDK which works both in the browser and on the server. This allows us to consider two system designs, server-side uploads or client-side uploads. Let's talk about server-side uploads first. In this case, we would have something like a file picker on the client, and we're going to send the file to our Node.js server. From there, we're going to then pass it on to Filestack Cloud, and we're going to respond with the upload success. From there, we're going to persist a record to our database. This is so we know which user uploaded which image. Finally, we respond to the client, letting it know the image was successfully uploaded. This does work perfectly fine, but we're sending the image to two different places, from the browser to the server, and then from the server to Filestack Cloud. We can be a little bit more efficient if we do a client-side upload. So let's take a look at that network design now. In client-side uploading, we just go straight from the browser via the Filestack Browser SDK to Filestack Cloud. From there, we're going to respond, and from here, we're going to persist our record to our database. But we do not need to send the entire image, just an ID over the wire. We're then going to save our record ID to the database and respond to the client, letting the user know the image was successfully uploaded. This not only saves a lot of network traffic, it also allows us to better leverage the Filestack JavaScript API, which runs in the browser. Now that we've settled on a system design, let's go ahead and look at the code I've written to create this image gallery. The first thing I'll do is give you a quick demo of the Filestack picker, just to give you an idea of how everything works. I'm going to go ahead and upload an image. Uh, let's just go ahead and select one of these. We're then going to do a little bit of editing. I can click on edit, I can go ahead and make it a circle, and I can move this around. Finally, I'm going to save it off, hit done, and hit upload. And this is going to go directly from the browser to the Filestack cloud. Once this one has finished uploading, we're going to update the page with our new images. Let's go ahead now and take a look at the code I wrote to get this to work. What you're seeing here is a view component, but this same idea is going to be applicable for any JavaScript framework. The first thing you need to do is initialize a reference to the Filestack JavaScript client on the front end. I'm doing that using a use file hook. Let's go ahead and take a look at the code. We're going to use Filestack.js and we're going to call the init method. The first argument is going to be your API key and this is going to be visible on the front end. More on that in just a minute. Once you've initialized a client, I'm just going to return it inside of my use Filestack function. So this is going to be a global singleton. It's just going to be initialized once when the user visits the application. So the Filestack API key in this case is going to be available on the front end. By default, you can only upload images. Things like overriding and deletion are not enabled. Uh, there's very fine grained policies you can apply. I would definitely encourage you to go ahead and read the documentation just to make sure you're doing everything in a secure fashion. Now that we have a reference to the Filestack client, let's go ahead and take a look at the rest of the code and see how this works. We're going to finish looking at the front end code and then we're going to take a look at the back end implementation. Now that we've successfully got a reference to the Filestack client, we can go ahead and show the image picker. For that, we're going to have a show picker function. And a couple of things are going to happen here. The first thing you need to do is create a new instance of the Filestack picker. And you do it like this. Just say Filestack.picker and pass in an object of options. There are many, many different options. I'm only using three. The first one I'm using is max files. This is the maximum amount of files the user can upload in one go. The second option I'm using is container. And this is where in the document, the file stack picker is going to be mounted. In this case, mine's just going to be a reference to a HTML div element. 
Finally, I'm using one of the lifecycle hooks on file upload finished. This is going to be called after the image has been successfully persisted to FileStack Cloud. In this case, we're going to go ahead and save to the server which image was uploaded and which user that image is associated with. Finally, you need to actually call instance.open and that's going to go ahead and render the file picker on the screen. Now that we've seen that, let's go ahead and talk a little bit about the server side implementation and see how I'm keeping track of which images were uploaded by which user. We talked about the on file upload finished lifecycle hook a moment ago. When the file has finished uploading, this callback is going to be called with a file argument. This has a lot of different information and is fully typed, which is really nice. What I'm going to do is then persist this to my server. In this case, I'm using trpc, but you can use any API client that you would like to use. I'm only going to persist a very small subset of the information. In this case, I'm only interested in the URL. Let's go ahead and have a look at the save user image endpoint. In this case, we're going to receive the URL as an input, and then I'm going to go ahead and say user.save file, passing in two arguments, the current user ID, so I know who uploaded the image, and the image URL. If we take a look at the save file, it is very simple. We're just going to go ahead and insert a new line to our database with the URL and the user. If I go ahead and have a look at my database now and select all from images, we can see all of the URLs for the associated images, and we know which user uploaded those, which is very useful. To load all of the images, we have a get images function as well. It's just going to select all of the images where the user is equal to the current user. And we're only interested in the URL. And that's how we're going to associate images with users on the server side. Finally, we're going to head back to the client now and see how get images is used and how we can render those in an adaptive fashion using the file stack adaptive JavaScript library. We are now going to head back to the front end and discuss how we're going to render these images in an efficient fashion. We previously talked about the on file upload finished hook, which is going to persist a URL to the database. Once that has finished persisting, we're going to call load images. This is going to load all of the images for the current user and assign them to an images variable. We're then going to loop over that and render those images. In this case, I'm using adaptive image. I'll talk about this component in just a moment. But before we do, let's talk about another library, the FileStack Adaptive Image Library. I grabbed it here on GitHub. Let's just scroll down and take a quick look at what this does. Basically, what this is going to do is help you to easily create a HTML picture element. And this is going to allow us to adaptively load images on the fly. Let's see an example of that right now, as well as the source code for my component. You can see here I'm importing from the FileStack Adaptive Library. Specifically, I'd like to grab the FS Adaptive function. We're also grabbing the picture options to allow the user to customize the component. For my props, I have a handle, which is just going to be a reference to the URL and any options the user might provide. We're then going to say fs.adaptive.picture, passing in our props, and then we're going to go ahead and specify PNG, which is the original format that I uploaded. Let's go ahead and see what happens. If I head back to my application and refresh the page, you can see we are indeed loading PNG images. These are very high quality lossless images, but this means the payload is very large, 500 kilobytes and even up to one megabyte. This one's five megabytes. These are very large images for such a small display. And what I would like to do is make this a bit more efficient by loading smaller images. In this case, I would recommend using WebP. This is a lossy format, so it's not going to be as high quality, but since my images are quite small, I think this is a good compromise to make. Let's go ahead and load WebP. It is worth noting that I originally uploaded PNG images. We'll talk a bit more about this transformation in just a moment. If I head back to the browser and refresh the page, everything is going to be a little bit faster, and that's because we're now loading WebP instead of PNG. If we look over here, everything is substantially smaller as well, a couple of hundred kilobytes, or for the large size, one megabyte, which is still about five times smaller than it previously was. One thing to consider is how this transformation is actually happening. This has been handled by the FileStack file upload API. We've talked about uploads and now we've talked about transformations. It's going to transform the image from PNG to WebP in this particular case. Finally, we're going to talk about delivery. Once that transformation has been applied, so PNG to uh, WebP, it is going to be cached on the FileStack CDN. This means next time the user requests the image, the transformation doesn't need to be applied because it's already been cached. Everything is going to be served nice and quickly. 
I think this is a really good combination for building a fast and efficient image sharing application. The FileStack Uploader for uploading, transformation, and delivering, and the FileStack Adaptive Library for making sure you're serving the correct image based on the client. We've now seen how you can implement FileStack in an existing application. We've barely scratched the surface of what you can do with FileStack, so to finish up, I'm going to show you two more of my favorite features. The first one would be relating to transformations. We talked about changing the format from PNG to WebP, but you can also have a fully featured editor in your browser. It has things like different transformations, text, and this is something a lot of users will generally appreciate and enjoy. The second thing I'd like to highlight is their cloud storage. By default, it is going to use S3, but they have support for a number of different providers. If you're building an application like this, I would highly recommend redundancy. And in this case, I would recommend using at least two different storage providers just to make sure you don't lose any of your data due to an unforeseen event. For example, when I built one of these applications recently, I used S3 as well as Google Cloud Storage. That does bring us to the end of this video. I hope you found it helpful and I'll see you in the next video.